Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Cincinnati Board of Education. I'm Jim Ford, Superintendent, and I appreciate those that are here with us in the audience tonight and those watching on television from home as we conduct the business with Cincinnati School District. Uh, it's exciting to have a lot of our students here that will be presenting a little bit later, so we're excited to see there's lots of contraptions around, so it's going to be pretty neat to see what you all do with those. Uh, I've got a few announcements I want to share. First, a big, uh, uh, big announcement. Uh, congratulations to uh, Simpson County Board of Education chairperson, Mr. David Webster. He is now the new KSBA, it's Kentucky School Boards Association president. He'll serve a two-year term, and he was uh, handed the gavel at the Kentucky School Boards Association meeting held in Louisville last month. And uh, we're really uh, proud of him and his service to the whole state. So join me and congratulate <laughs> Also at that conference, uh, the Frankenstein High School Chorus, Advanced Chorus, uh, performed uh, on two occasions, on Saturday night and on Sunday morning, and just did a, an outstanding job of uh, representing our school community uh, with some beautiful music. and. Uh, I want to congratulate them and uh, Emily Petty, uh, the director uh, for that work. And then also want to thank uh, Franklin Simpson Middle School art students for creating the banner, which was up on uh, display in, uh, at the conference. Uh, so it was a beautiful banner and appreciate that. I'd like to congratulate our uh, boys and girls basketball team for outstanding seasons and both winning the 13th district championships. Uh, and then competing well in the regional championship. Uh, Taven Lovin broke the all-time uh, uh, scoring record for Franklin Simpson High School and uh, was named the fourth region athletic director's player of the year and was a finalist for Mr. Basketball and also won the Max Preps player of the year uh, vote. And, uh, so congratulations to Taven. I'd like to give a shout out to Coach Lee Spencer. He was named the region four KABC Coach of the Year, and uh, also would like to give a, a huge thank you to Coach David Clark, who's retiring this year uh, from coaching, and uh, he's done a, a, an immense amount of work over the years supporting students and uh, athletics uh, in 30 plus years of service, and uh, we'd like to congratulate and wish him the best in his next endeavors. Uh, I'd also like to uh, Congratulate Madison Davis. Uh, she was named the 2017 Kentucky Prep Softball Region 4 uh, preseason top 10 player. And in fact, uh, I think our Lady Cats are opening their season right now. Uh, and so it's, I'm glad it's a little warmer and sunny. Uh, for them, we them luck. Our Francis High School Bass Anglers uh, finished in fourth place out of 40 uh, teams this past weekend. So go. Uh, Bass anglers, and uh, it's fun to watch on Twitter uh, see their haul. You know, they'll hold up their fish, and uh, sometimes I, I wish I was with them. A uh, few more shout outs we want to give Lincoln Elementary's academic team uh, won second place at the regional academic meet. Uh, Frank Simpson High School sophomore Isabella Fools <coughs> uh, was accepted to the uh, Gatton Academy for Math and Science at WKU. So, way to go, Isabella. Colin Preston, uh, a Franklin Simpson High School sophomore, was uh, recently named to the Kentucky DECA State Officer Team, so congratulations, Colin. And then we're all proud of the young ladies who competed in the Lincoln Elementary Junior Miss on Tuesday, and our overall winner, Ms. Lily Jack. Stand up, Lily. <laughs> I'd like to tell you about the second Little Cats program and the reg registration was uh, held today. This program covers information about school readiness and kindergarten readiness. Uh, the next program will be held on April 20th. It's also the last program uh, and, and they'll be talking about vi visiting the school bus. So I encourage all uh, parents who have preschoolers uh, and kindergartners uh, coming up. Uh, come to those little cat sessions and find out more about that. That would be from 9 to 10 15 at Franklin Elementary. And then uh, next week, Central County Schools will host its annual uh, district STEAM technology showcase 
uh, on Thursday, March 23rd at the high school gymnasium from 4.30 to 6.00. Uh, the previous three showcases have been huge successes and the events grown each year. We're excited uh, to see our students showcase their projects and skills uh, centered on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So come out and support our kiddos and staff who, who uh, work with them on some amazing projects. And uh, don't forget, spring break will be April 3rd through 7th. And uh, we've set graduation, and Mr. Schlosser announced that uh, recently. Uh, the class of 2017 will have graduation at 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 20th at WKU's Dental Arena. So come out and help us celebrate an outstanding class of seniors uh, at Arkansas High School. That concludes the announcement. I'll turn over to Mr. Webster to get started. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the board. It's always good to see a crowd like this for the board meeting. Uh, to see students here with us, the former boards. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. On the first order of business is to approve the agenda. Motion. Nancy. Second. Second. So approve it. Any changes to the agenda? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. The next is the gifted and talented presentation. Hi, I'm Jana Kirshner, Instructional Supervisor, and one of the things I get to do in my job is work with a gifted program. So, as you all know, the month of February was Gifted Education Month, and the Sims County Board signed a proclamation declaring that um, Gifted Education Month in Simpson County, and um, we had people that attended a conference. This was the month when the Gifted Education Board report um, was due, and we thought it might be a neat idea for you to see names and faces that go with some of that data that's in the board report. So we're excited to have um, some students and teachers with us tonight that will show you some of their works and projects in progress. And so I want to make sure you know that these are not finished projects because that's important to them that these are things they're working on. So we have from Lincoln Elementary, Ms. Diane Way is a gifted teacher there and she brought some folks with her so she's going to tell you a little bit about their program. And then Mr. Justin, Justin Mitchell is a gifted coordinator at the middle school and he has some folks to share their projects with you too. The FSEEF granted us a very generous grant to help fund Makerspace at Lincoln Elementary. And the purpose of the Lincoln Elementary Makerspace is to complement the Exploratorium. And um, so the kids are using materials and things to create new designs. So we started out this year in math um, learning about simple machines. And so they put together models of simple machines. We talked about what simple machines could do, how they could use simple machines. And then they're making their own simple machine module. So they're creating a, a small module that includes at least one simple machine and it has to create a reaction, some sort of a chain reaction. Then the plan is to take them all over to the Exploratorium and connect them into one long chain reaction. And so the kids have brought uh, a couple of their projects. Um, and I'm going to let them explain what they're doing. They've been working on them about three weeks, three different weeks maybe, and they drew designs first. So they had a plan. They didn't just jump in there and start throwing stuff together. They had a plan, and then they had to work through some problems to get their plan to work. So I'm going to let them explain what they're doing and how their plan is kind of progressed. All right? How about Lily and Brooke first? <laughs> So our simple machine, the one that we used in our chain reaction, we actually used two. We used a lever and a pulley. And the pulley is activated when a cup of marbles is poured into another cup attached to the pulley, which pulls the other part down and the fulcrum of the lever is rotated when the other end of the pulley gets lifted and there's a marble and that's what's going to react to the next part. So. Remember, it's the 
a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> they have actually worked at school. They have been working in school. Okay, so artists is a big complaint that 
Our mirror ball is going to hit our golf ball at the same showcase. Our golf ball is going to roll down, hit the tube, orange tube thingy that has the ball in it. The, it's going to go into a, the top of a water bottle, and it's going to go into a spiral thingy. The spiral thing, thing is going to go into the other person's thing. Six, seventh, and eighth graders into uh, work on topics and research uh, questions that they are interested in. We try for some of them to make sure that they tie in with their their gifted identification, but some of them it's really not doesn't fit in nice cookie cutter uh, ways. And so some of their their projects aren't necessarily in their identified area, and that's okay. So one of the big things that we're working on is is learning how to research and, and to do that well, and different sources and gathering those. And so we are in the process, so we're not done with our, our research projects. We will have a showcase for all of the GT, uh, our middle school GT projects at the last week of April. Uh, and so we'll send that day out soon about uh, that showcase. We have three students here tonight from 6th, 7th, 8th grade. And they're just going to tell you a little bit about uh, their projects that they picked, um, research questions for some of them, or what their topic is and uh, tell you how far along they are in that process. So I will let Ella begin. Hi, I'm Ella Simpson. I'm a sixth grader at FSMS, and I'm participating in the Gifted and Positive program. For the project we have been asked to do, I've presented myself with the question, what is cancer and how can it be cured? As I conducted my research, I looked for what exactly is cancer and how can it be solved. I found that cancer is the uncontrolled cell growth of the bodily cell. I also found that most, the most efficient way to treat cancer is immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is using the immune system to fight back the cancer. Um, my question was, uh, what does it take to do, I mean, what does it take to get an EPA started in the hospital? And uh, I started with, uh, I showed you two to you, and I thought that are now well, one of the most valuable players in the NBA. And one of them was Michael Jordan and in hospital, Michael Jordan, uh, he didn't make it, he didn't make it his varsity year. And I, I look back on him and now, now he's the best player in, he's the best player in the NBA. Um, I bet that every time he played, it pushed him even harder even when he thought about it. And uh, Carmelo Anthony, he didn't make it, he didn't make it in high school either. And um, they had to, they had to put in work and extra time. Uh, I'm Maddie Hall, I'm a new fair. So for my GT project, I'm not necessarily asking a question, but for my GT college thing, I'm uh, reading in language arts and literary. So I'm writing my own book about my personal experience, but with a little bit of just on a kind of a high school environment that I find interesting. I'm really going to write about. come out to the GT Showcase uh, in about a month or so and see more of these projects that are displayed, their research, and, and all of their work. So thank you all for letting us present tonight. Thank you.
So basically, the um, uh, the game like it's kind of like a game. It's designed out in a box. What, what's the dimension of it? It's a twelve by twelve box, and the objective of the game is to get these wiffle balls either into a goal or a um, spherical basketball goal in the center of the um, court. And pretty much, you're, there's two teams, um, two remotes that control each robot, one controls the arm, and then one controls the motors that take it wherever it needs to go. And you either need to put the wiffle balls into the um, goal to score points or into the um, basket. The bigger balls control, they're worth four points. How much did you say they're worth? The big balls are 25. The big, bigger balls were 25, and the smaller ones are? Depends on if you can advance 10 to get the, the hoop in five, or three and to get the soft goal. So pretty much we've got to design a, um, type of program to work. So we, um, the whole backstory behind the program is we've got to go to a um, certain spot on the, um, in the arena to start, is it to start the game? Mm -hmm. And then from there on, we control the robots um, by the remotes to um, score points. Um. I joined this class because I thought it would be a very good experience for me, even though it's um, not something that I thought I would do in the past, but it's a really fun class and it's given me something to look forward to during the day and actually give me experience that like building with a team and all that stuff. Um, the reason why I joined this class was I thought it during the summer, I took Aquabots classes, and I really liked that. I was really good at it. I loved the programming, even though it was really hard, but you always got to stick with it. And this has given me a different picture of programming and building the robots. I really enjoyed this. It gives you more opportunities to use the tools that gives you, and it's just awesome. Do you have any questions for us? What's the difference in the programming for these robots compared to like the Lego robots? Um, well, for this one is with our, this one with the Legos, you're completely programming the Lego robots to complete the challenge. This one, the first 30 seconds are programmed, and then the other two minutes you get to control. Um, there, it's the Legos is more drag and drop, and this one is not so much drag and drop. You actually have to 
put in and type in the code. So I mean, that's, it's a little more advanced than what the um, Lego robotics are. And then what I like about this one, instead of click, clicking things together, you actually are using wrenches and using screwdrivers and they're having to, you know, run the wires and, you know, all that. So is there, uh, like, they can use their own design they use their ideas own design. on how you put the robot together. Yes, sir, they can, and they can add some other things to it. So they can build, like, we have a set of wheels that are 360 wheels that you can put on it, and it'll, it'll drive and spin a lot better than these. Amazing. So they're looking to grow next year. So a lot of the uh, challenges that they do we're looking at this past year, they made a, like a vacuum cleaner to suck the balls in and push them out. So you can modify this design endless. So it's getting engineering involved and the kids, you know, get to use their creativity. Well, if you can make one that will fold clothes, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <ditch. laughs> All right. So what do you see next? What do, what do yeah. I see next? Yeah, in, in this kind of... In this time? Um, oh, with the program or with robots? Either one. Um, well, I just got back from a conference at KISD and you know, I was learning about the computer science, so I'm hoping to inter integrate that and more programming into the IT pathway. But I'm hoping to grow this. Um, we have nine this year. I'd like to, you know, maybe get to 12 or 15 next year and just try to keep growing because it's a skill I feel like everybody, the world's going to and a skill that everybody can use. That's good. And so you didn't think you'd like this necessarily, but you found that you do? Mm -hmm. Has that changed your uh, career path at all? Do you see yourself going in a different direction? Um, it may, but uh, as of right now, I can't uh, certainly say that. Right. Mm -hmm. Peter, are, the, are you all thinking about a career that might integrate these kinds of skills? Um, next year I plan on going to Western and studying this, majoring in it. Yeah, okay. Cool. What about you, Taylor? Uh, mine, I've I wanted to go in the medical field and possibly, probably program the robots and stuff during the surgery. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks for coming.
Well, they're still, at, they're coming report, you know, the STAR and the um, growth report to you all, but yes, they're still seeing so really good participation and engagement out of that program. Do you know how many kids are participating in that? Um, right offhand, you know, I think she kept it around to 30 that she was going to track the data on. And then what happened is, you know, just the consistency of getting them down there. So that kind of, that number kind of fluctuates a little bit. But um, again, we were targeting that third to fifth grade group to tutor and look again at their star scores and, and growth and progress. So we will hear if that was improvement. Okay. Any other questions on that? I and I basically or progress notes. Thanks, Dr. Kirshner. And we also have our gifted and talented uh, program report. It's also that our students uh, put some of their work that they're working on currently in front of us and uh, appreciate Mr. Mitchell and Ms. Wade coming. Janet, any other comments on the GT report? Well, And then uh, we have our March 10th Learning Learning Community Day report. Uh, I know the board was able to see the uh, feedback from the staff on the Learning Community Day. I think they appreciate time to get together, collaborate. We're still trying to get better at the vertical piece, uh, but it looked like good work. I went to every one of the sessions. So, uh, any questions there? I just really appreciated the report, and I it was mm -hmm. fun to see the different facilitators and what they were focused on in their groups it seems like you tried to hit a multitude of skill sets going across and i thought that was that was a great report thank you i'd like to see what we're spending our time on that's right <laughs> well it's an important investment and uh, we got some really good feedback from our teachers uh, to help us in terms of you know, I think we've gotten better and better at using the resource, but it's always good to get uh, their feedback. And, and, and I felt like I'm interested to see the, uh, you know, the feedback uh, on this vertical work that we did this last time. But that, you know, the, the conversations I saw and was a part of, uh, you know, like I know we were talking with uh, Mr. Mitchell and the social studies folks about you know, fake news and news bias and that's a, you know, a big issue and how are we addressing that uh, from a, you know, uh, I guess that group was uh, fifth grade through 12 uh, in particular, but uh, some important conversations and they were doing a lot of sharing, so I appreciate that. And then our last report is our um, College of Career Readiness update and uh, if you follow Twitter, Mr. Schlosser uh, puts out uh, uh, updates on that, uh, we're making progress uh, with our current uh, class of seniors and uh, still have about, what, eight weeks to go? Is that right, Mr. Taylor? Is that about right? And so, uh, so we keep uh, pushing toward that, but uh, you can see that uh, over 76% of them have met a, a college annual career readiness benchmark already. So keep you posted on that progress. Usually okay. at this time of year we get daily tweets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I started getting Got two more. Cool, uh, <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Any questions on any of the reports? I appreciate all the staff who helped put those together. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the consent agenda. A motion. Motion. Second. 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 I'm going to say something about item J, which is to approve the fundraising form for the Franklin Simpson Board of Education Scholarship. We started this scholarship last year and we appropriated some of our per diems to do this. It was a small amount, but in our joint meeting with the Sightfix Council, we talked about trying to grow your office and we wanted to try to grow this scholarship to where we could give more money to a student or two students from Simpson County that was going into the education field to actually come back to the, the system to teach. And, you know, we can do this if we can grow a scholarship. And so I started a GoFundMe account just for the scholarship. And this is tax deductible. Any, any money that's put into the account is tax deductible. Um, 
but we wanted to give a boy and a girl an opportunity to come back. And who better to teach in Simpson County than a student that's going through the school that knows what Simpson County needs? And uh, I think it's a great opportunity to help our system grow and to help students that want to be teachers. So uh, I'm, I'm asking you if you would like to donate to this fund through this. And again, we can give you a certificate where you gave your money to the Simpson County Board of Education Scholarship. What is the deadline for that? People ask, asking April, the deadline for the scholarship submission. The, 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 the change, I think it's, it's 14th, 15th. 14th, is that Friday? Friday. The first one is April 14th. But this is an ongoing scholarship, so the more we get, the more we'll be able to help the student out. Good idea. I just want to clarify it's first generation college student so this would be a student that was the first person in their family to go to school and it is for the field of education, education. and i think it really complements what we've already done with education this year in sending our teachers to get their doctors doctors so it's another way to point forward what a great career some you know someone can have to get to be a teacher and impact the lives of young people. It's uh, something I'm you know privileged to be a part of and, and uh, I want people to realize what a great career it can be. It's hard work, uh, but it's rewarding work. And uh, so encourage students to think about being an educator. On the favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next is action items. And the first one is request to approve emergency certified substitutes for 2017 2018. Motion. Nancy? Second. Hyde. Discussion on this item. Um, well, you know, we do this annually. And uh, as you all know, uh, a supply of subs is a challenging uh, task uh, for the district. Uh, so we do have some that do fall into this uh, category of, uh, that, that, that the state has criteria that allow them to be emergency certified when they don't actually hold a, a teaching certificate, but they meet certain criteria. And so we're uh, asking the board to approve these slots uh, for those individuals. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Next is a request to approve the amended 2016-2017 school calendar. Second. Nancy, on the Well, you have a copy of the uh, amended uh, calendar in front of you. We only had one snow day, and I missed the opportunity to say, Old Man Winter. We've got a lot of, a lot of grief over that, but, uh, you know, Old Man Winter just visited uh, sparsely this time, but uh, I kind of like it. Do a little bit more sleep <laughs> in those mornings. Uh, but uh, our last day of school, Mr. Kilbert, uh, uh, see the 23rd. 23rd. Uh, last day for students, Tuesday the 23rd. And the last day for staff, the closing day would be the uh, Wednesday the 24th. So we're asking the board to approve this. Of course, there's always threats of flooding or uh, water shut down. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry, you know, I've lived these things. And, uh, uh, but I hope we'll, we'll amend it again. Yes. But uh, I hope we don't have to amend it again. And as, as I mentioned in our comments, we are going to have graduation on Saturday, May 20th, uh, the, which the law will allow you to have the ceremony prior to the last student attendance day. But the, the graduating seniors will not receive their diplomas until that Tuesday um, at the end of the school day. So, um, but uh, I think that'll work better for families and, and not take it so separated from the end of school. All fair? Aye. Next is the request to approve the 2017 2018 school calendar. Motion. Second. Hiding. Discussion on this side. Um, you have a, a proposed draft uh, in your materials. School starts on 
Wednesday, August 9th, which follows the pattern that we've been using for a number of years. Uh, and you can see we'd already improved our fall break for the first full week in uh, October. And uh, then the winter break, uh, based on feedback uh, from staff, would be uh, start uh, December 18th and run two weeks in a day, which is similar to this year's uh, winter break for Christmas and the holidays. And, uh, and then spring break uh, would be the first full week of April. And then you can see our, where our, our learning community days, parent-teacher conference days, and uh, those kinds of other breaks that throughout the year are based on feedback from staff. Really, the only thing that was at all a little bit different, there was a little bit more interest in moving uh, the start of school to the Wednesday of the second full week, which would be a minor shift, but it would have been significant this year because it would have moved it to Wednesday the 16th. Uh, but still, the majority chose to kind of stay with the pattern that we currently have, uh, which would be the second Wednesday of August, uh, as opposed to the second Wednesday of, uh, of, the, of the Wednesday of the second full week, and uh, so we're recommending what the majority chose, and uh, but we know it's at the wishes of the board. So there's a long haul for April and May in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, without old man winter visiting, it's a long haul. For, for, uh, you know, winter break to spring break. Uh, so, but we did have that one uh, long weekend, and of course, the NLK day. But, uh, uh, we can do it. We can do it. Next question. All in favor? Aye. All right. Next is the request to approve the Central County Regional Training Center for self employment contract. Motion. Second. Motion for Bridget, second Nancy. Well, you have the proposed contracts, uh, and as you all know, we serve as the fiscal agent uh, for the regional training center. It serves uh, to support preschools in our uh, region, and uh, Sheila Ball and her team uh, recommended these contracts for some special work they have going. Uh, so we're asking you to approve them. Uh, quick question that's really about preschool, not so much about the regional um, coordinators, but I've been seeing signs pop up in the neighborhood about kindergarten readiness. Mm -hmm. And I thought a, a number of folks have stopped me and made comments and said, well, I didn't know about this. Like, well, yeah. Good. Get the word out. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's working. Yeah, that's really good news. I appreciate the uh, Rachel, her team, and then it's so great to have Candy Stolt come back and work with us. And those of y'all know Candy, she's a dynamo teacher in person, and uh, so she's helping us out. So that's good to hear. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is a request to extend student accident insurance coverage to Scholastic Insurance Incorporated. With Charles M. Moore Insurance Agency, its local representative through 2018-2019 school year. Motion. Motion for Bridget. Second. Second by Heidi. Discussion on the uh, You have the documentation in your uh, materials to, for that recommendation. And, uh, Mr. Kilburn oversees this and uh, has uh, reported good service. Robert does a great job working with our families. And I would say it's one of the things that's very helpful to have that local uh, local agent. Uh, and then uh, Scholastic's been good with their pricing with us. They have, and this is uh, the same as, as last year's rate. And then locking that in for two years, I think, is a is a good deal with insurance. You know. Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Next is the request to approve amended, amended job description 2.35 for one early child with center work. Motion. Motion by Nancy. Second. 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 Second.
Jessica Barnes and uh, Rachel Fairman and Lily McIntosh work together on just some cleaned up language in this. Uh, and so we're just recommending you approve it as presented. Next is the request to approve the minute job description 2.42 custodian in the central office, 2.43 custodian school, and 2.431 custodian lead elementary and middle school and high school. Motion. Second. Motion. Motion. Second. Discussion on the side. Again, there's just some, some clean up language. Uh, there, uh, the custodians are district wide employees and they report to their site supervisor, which in most cases is the principal, but also to the uh, maintenance director, or operations manager. So uh, they cleaned up some of that language uh, throughout the document. I will say Mr. Webster or somebody caught uh, a, a, another revision to the central office custodial because uh, it had a reference to principal. And that needs to be revised to uh, superintendent and uh, maintenance director. So we're, we'll make that change uh, noted. Um, and uh, I would recommend you all approve this presented otherwise. Other than that one. It's on the very first page. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> Second line from the bottom. Yeah, we'll get that, we'll get uh, that fixed. Thanks for catching me. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next is a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. I thought Jennifer was going to take that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mine went great. I never. That would work. <laughs>